My name is Tom Holman. For a year and a half, I was a director of U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement for the Trump administration. Under our guidance, the border was secure. It was the most secure border in this nation's history. But now, things have changed. Chaos and even death prevail. My mission is to see that the border gets secured again and save lives. Welcome to Defend the Border and Save Lives. Mr. Holman, is there a crisis on the border? Of course. And has there been a crisis there for a long time? Yes. How did we get to this point where we take children out of mothers' and fathers' arms? Here is the memo that I would like to submit to the congressional record. It seems like this is the source of it. Mr. Holman, your name is on this, is this correct? Yes, I signed that memo. And so the recommendation of the many that you recommended, you recommended family separation. I recommend a zero tolerance. Which includes family separation. Zero tolerance was interpreted as the policy that separated children from their... If I get arrested for DUI and I have a young child in a car, I'm going to be separated. When I was a police officer in New York and I arrested a father for domestic violence, I separated that... Mr. Holman, with all due respect, legal asylees are not charged with any crime. When you're in the country illegally, it's violation 8 United States Code 1325. Seeking asylum is legal. If you want to seek asylum, go through the port of entry, do it the legal way. The Attorney General of the United States has made that clear. Okay. Mr. Holman, I'm a father. Do you have children? How can you possibly allow this to happen under your watch? Do you not care? Is it because these children don't look like children that are around you? I don't get it. Have you ever held a deceased child in your arms? First of all, your comments are disgusting. I've served my country. I find your comments disgusting as well. I find your comments disgusting as well. I've served my country for 34 years. And yes, I held a five year old boy in my arms that, and back that tractor trailer. I knelt down beside him and said a prayer for him because I knew what his last 30 minutes of his life were like. And I had a five year old son at the time. What I've been trying to do my 34 years serving my nation is to save lives. So for you to sit there and insult my integrity and my love for my country and for, the, and for children, that's why this whole thing needs to be fixed. The you time have, of the gentleman has expired. I've asked you politely to let me go beyond my, my time and you let other people go beyond their time, but not, not to Tom Holman. He don't get me go have, beyond his time. Mr. Holman, we have this, this approved is, this is, this is an agreement this is between... Please respect the chair's authority. The I respect the chair's the authority, gen- but the chair... Mr. Holman! But you you work for me. me. I'm a taxpayer. I grew up in a small town. I grew up milking cows. I grew up believing and saying exactly what I believe in and saying what I want to say. And if people don't like me, they cannot like me. I never pull punches. I never dance around the truth. I tell them exactly what I think and they can like it or love it. It is what it is. I was in Dallas, Texas, giving a speech to the International Chiefs of Police. And I got the phone call saying there's a, there a tragedy in Victoria, Texas, and I need to get down there and run the investigation. Authorities say temperatures reached 170 degrees inside the locked trailer. It was down in Victoria, Texas. Then we got taken over to the crime scene. And when I got to the crime scene, I was walking through the crime scene by, I think it was a, a, a Texas Ranger. There's some dead migrants that fell out the tractor trailer and onto the ground. And most of the dead migrants were in, were in the trailer. So I hopped up to the trailer and did what I do as a criminal investigator. And uh, I had a, a photographer there taking photos. So I'm standing back to track the trailer at 17 dead migrants, including a five-year-old little boy that was uh, underneath his dad. His dad 
had him cradled, almost like he was protecting him. Uh, so I walked around the back of that tractor trailer and uh, one at a time, taking pictures of the position of the body and where they're locating back that tractor trailer. And uh, the, uh, the photographer, I told him that we're gonna stay away from the child. We're gonna save him for last. The reason I did that, because I could not handle it at the time. I had a five-year-old son at the time, and I've seen a lot of terrible things. For, for some reason, that, that little boy um, hit me hard. So we saved him for last. And we finally did get to him. I knelt beside him and put my hand on him and said a prayer because I knew what his last hour, what his last 30 minutes of life were like. He's in a steel box. No light, pitch black, got up to 175, 180 degrees. Can't breathe. You can only imagine that he was scared to death, crying, begging his father to help him. His father couldn't help him. You got to think what his father's going through because his father's put in that position. Fast forward, we, we, we put 14 people in prison, everybody involved. I wish we could have put them in prison the rest of their lives because of what these 19 migrants went through. And, and, and that experience change who I was. So when people see me either on the Fox Network or they see me testifying in front of Congress, they say, why do you get so emotional? When you secure the border, you save lives. That's why I wrote, that's why I retired, I wrote a book, Defend the Border, Save Lives. When you have a secure border, you, you save lives. And it upsets me that of, of all the death I've seen on that border over 34 years, that was just one instance of many we had the most secured border in my lifetime under President Trump, and President Biden came in unsecured it. So that's why I'm pissed off. More people are going to die, and I said that. When you open the border up, more people are going to die. In Brackenville, Texas, sheriffs and judges from around the border region have gotten together to stand up and declare a state of evasion. Today is historic. This is the first time any judge anywhere in America has ruled that we're suffering an invasion on our southern border. You see, we've been under invasion uh, at our southern border for a long, long time, especially under this administration where it is complete lawlessness. Texas going to Union, part of their that agreement was they would protect our border, and they are not doing it. They're far from doing it. The Constitution on Article 4 mandates that the federal government must protect every state from invasion. It's a constitutional mandate. It's not voluntary. Um, so yeah, they do have a guarantee clause under Article 4 that they must keep us free from invasion. America doesn't know. They don't know what's happening here. And we're here to try to change that. Hello, everyone. My name is Dale Lynn Carruthers. I'm the county judge from Carroll County. Sheriff Willard Lloyd from Goliad County, Texas. County judge in Goliad County. The mayor of the city of Uvalde, Texas. Kenny County attorney. I represent the 21st Congressional District of Texas. I'm the sheriff here in Kenny County. Just the month of May alone, and I'm pastor right behind my house. Uh, there was 49 uh, illegals apprehended. A lot of fence damage. Stolen vehicles, damaged the property. The coyotes bringing people through our community, pedophiles, convicted murderers, drug dealers, gang members. You hear the term invasion, and that's exactly what this is. Last month, we had 4,350 somebody. Month before that, 4,200. We are under siege. What they're doing right here is what the Attorney General of Texas needs to do, which is recognize an invasion. It is an invasion that is being pushed by the cartels into our country, and it must come to a stop. This is not sustainable for Texas. That a court, a judge of this country, has found as a matter of law that the United States is being invaded. That has never happened before today.
But what is it really like on the front lines of the border? This is a real grand. Under President Biden, has turned into a river of broken dreams. These are birth control pills. There's a condom. We don't know if they are the, the parents to these children or not. Right. Usually they will use them because they think that they'll get an easier access into the country, where at this point, all you have to do is walk up. But also, points to the smuggling that is going on. There's a lot of smuggling going on. And why would you why would you get smuggled if you could just come in and turn yourself in? Because they're trying to avoid detection, because they have criminal histories, because they have their links to the cartel or to gang memberships. The whole border crisis, the, the, there's nothing made up about the border crisis. We're getting attacked every single day. Nobody understands that this happens several times a day. Mark Garcia is a former Border Patrol agent who still lives in Eagle Pass. He was medically retired from the Border Patrol after he and his team saved 90 women and children from drowning in the Rio Grande. For his actions that night, Mark was awarded the Congressional Badge of Bravery. So do you don't think that the Biden administration supports this? Oh, I know they support it. They, oh, they okay. have to. There's no way that these people are, are, are just showing up out of the blue saying, oh, I was just told to walk here. Every single one of my buddies is telling me right now, whenever they start the, the, uh, the interview process, they're being told by the illegal alien, yo soy invitado. I'm invited. You need to hurry up. Give me my paperwork, because your president invited me to come. This is the United States of America. It's a shame what the groups have done to the land here. With all the trash, clothing, all across the southern border of Mexico, see those residents sitting up high. We're being monitored right now. And they're going to decide when these groups pass, depending on where the, act where the enforcement activity is. Just mounds and mounds of clothing and trash, as far as you can see. They know once they get here, they can dump this stuff because they'll be taken to custody for a few hours. United States government give them new clothing, new shoes, new backpacks, and a plane ticket or bus ticket to anywhere in the United States they want to go. I just picked up some identification cards I got several here out of thousands laying around. Venezuela, Cuba, Guinea, another Venezuelan, a Nicaraguan. Border Patrol has arrested people from 161 different countries around the world. Many more IDs. Why they dump them here before they turn themselves into the uh, Authorities. Why would anybody do that? Why well, I've been doing this 35 years, I can tell you why. They don't want them to know who they are. Are they criminals? Are they on the terrorist watch list? They want to come here and start a whole new life with a whole new ID because they're hiding something? Again, that's a, that's a public safety concern. That's a national security concern. When you open the border up, you open up national security issues and the only way you stop it is defend the border and save lives. Over 800 migrant deaths so far in this administration. I'll tell you something else that keeps me up at night. Why are we seeing such a huge uptick in military aged males coming in from communist countries? Countries that have strategic reasons to do us harm. Ask him what his job was, Ocupado, in the military. 
Yo soy Jeff, ingeniero. Engineer. 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 Chef. And serve him material too. He was a soldier. What do we see him? Pretty, he's being a little evasive. They're not. They're not telling us. How many trained soldiers are dropping their IDs at the razor wire? Having thousands upon thousands of foreigners trained in the use of military arms and explosives scattered throughout our country should scare the hell out of everybody. Tenéis niños? Pásale. Buenos días. Pásale esto. Buenos días. ¿De dónde es? ¿De dónde es? Nicaragua. ¿De dónde es? Nicaragua. ¿De dónde es? Nicaragua. ¿Todos? Nicaragua. Buenas. ¿Cuántos tienes? Huh? Yes. Can you see Padre? It's all the way 13 year old all by himself. Bueno. How's the honest tennis? They don't this. Nicaragua? Hey, they don't this. Nicaragua. Okay. 13 year old by himself. And there's a smuggler walking back with his pockets full of cash. What he's going to do, he's just going to go back to Mexico. He's already got his money. He doesn't give a shit, but he can't control that group. There's 12 or 13 of them. There, there, there was a te, uh, 13 year old in there. If one of them get caught in the current, they're dead. That smuggler is not going to save them. His pockets are already full of cash. So as soon as he got him close, he turned around and went back. Because number one, he didn't want to be arrested. Number two, he's already got his money. This is the United States of America. It's supposed to be sovereign land. We're supposed to be able to control our own border. We don't control the border. The criminal cartels, the ones looking at us right now, they control this border. The strongest nation in the world no longer controls the southern border, which has resulted in, in historic illegal immigration, historic drug flow, historic sex trafficking of women and children. This can be stopped. We, we've done it before. We got to defend the border. We got to save lives. You know, working down here in Eagle Pass, I've personally been shot at. Agents get shot at all the time work in uh, this area. Well, you know, I've been involved with one shooting and I gave him some back, I was able to return fire. You know, with that being said, the National Guard right now has directives to de-escalate. So if they get, if they receive fire from across uh, Mexico, then they have to run behind their home V and take cover. And that just me basically means run away. With Texans, that just doesn't track. You can't defend the border while running away. Dallas, Texas is 110 miles north of the border. But they also suffer with illegal human trafficking on a daily basis. We're standing right here probably about 118 miles north of the border. We're south of Dallas, Texas. And yesterday, we had a group of illegals drive straight through this fence. They came right over this, laid down the fence. This far looked like this. And these things are in there pretty hard. This is a high fence ranch. And they just ran straight through, pushed it down. And we had six DPS officers out here looking for them yesterday. What happened then? Did they catch them? They looked for them? Or what? They didn't catch them. They went out to a road probably north of here and they just got away. This is the fifth time the same guy has done this. It's one coyote. He basically runs illegals through. And our neighbors on this ranch have been telling us this is the fifth time he's done it, and they haven't caught him. I had 15 El Salvadorians on my place the other day. I, I made one go to the road, and when he went to the road, 
I stopped and I noticed the brush had been pushed back here. We had been in a drought and I came over and there was this woman's shirt and it was blood stained. And um, right down here, and then it's faded where it's, it's not. And there was a dead dog over here, a pit bull, who was killed. I don't know if the body's over here, but this was a staging area or area where the, I saw the truck come and pick the guy up. It was like a coyote staging area. It's a skeleton of the dog that was in the staging area that was killed. It was shot. It looked like a healthy dog, and the only people that live around here don't have pit bulls. Can you tell me who you are and exactly what you, what you do? Sure. My name is Keith Rose. I am a physician. I'm a surgeon. I live in South Texas. I've spent a lot of time down in Mexico, Central, and South America. In fact, my wife is, was born in Mexico and lived a large portion of her life down there. I worked in the intelligence community for a long time. And I spent a lot of time overseas, but I also worked in Central and South America. Currently, my wife and I have worked with a nonprofit organization where we do relief work. We embed with third country militaries, go into areas, and we'll do surgeries on children with uh, craniofacial malformations. We'll go in and bring medication into places, and we work de certain disasters like the one down in Guatemala after the volcano erupted, I believe, back in 2018. So the question I have is, so how did you go from a surgeon to be in the intelligence community? I was in the military, but I was just in the reserves in the 90s. And when I got out, I was approached um, by someone that worked in intelligence and said they were interested in talking to me. And over the next several months, I was brought into the community. So at some point in time, you, you had one of the highest security clearances of government issues. Okay. But now we have an historic illegal immigration crisis. And right now, Border Patrol is arresting people from 161 different countries. The majority of them are Central Americans. Do you have any information why you think we're seeing such a huge population from Central America? My wife and I were down there in 2015. We, we landed in Guatemala City. We were going to go work in an area of the, the Aztec Indians that speak to key. And when we went down there, we landed in Guatemala City, and the newspaper La Prensa showed on the front page, Vice President Biden at the time, the, the front page of the paper basically said, the borders are open for minor children. And minor children are welcome, and then families can bring them. So there was a big push to bring people. They had several articles in the paper on this, on how to form groups, how to come north. And then Joe Biden was the head guy down there doing it. And that's why he was on the front page of the paper telling everyone to come north. Then several months later, they went back and said, we now have a humanitarian crisis with all these children showing up at the border. So we need to open it up for adults. We need to have a better process down there. And they created a whole new program where they could send more money down to Guatemala to solve the crisis that President Biden started several months earlier. And one paper picked up on it in the Washington Post, and in that article, I believe, was pulled. But at the end of the day, they came out and said, oh, well, we really meant only 4,000 people could come. But they, when we were down there, we saw it firsthand. We had the paper. We read it. Not only did they have it, but they had articles in the back of the paper with pictures showing how you form a caravan, what water to bring. Organized. Organized. I mean, it, everything was, was, was very much organized, and they were really pushing minors. And my wife, who's from Mexico and speaks fluent Spanish, started talking to the locals. And we talked to the people that were actually officially down there from Antigua Rescate. And what they told us was that the State Department, under the Trump administration, were renting out large venues, whether they be soccer stadiums, gymnasiums, and they were organizing caravans to come north, telling people the border was open. They had the Democrat staffers down there helping them cross, and they were preparing them 
for the Democrat Party, they would tell them, remember, this is the Democrats. Yeah. What did they say? Do you remember that the Democrats were the ones helping them cross when they were here? And what year was this? I'd say 2018. Did you ever get to brief President Trump on this issue? I was asked to come into the West Wing and I met with Steve Bannon, Seb Gorka told me, you need to talk to the president. I briefed him on several things that he wanted him to know. And he would grab me by the hand and he said, we're going to go talk to him now. And we went up the back corridor of the West Wing and we went up and we went into the waiting area in the Oval Office. And every time he would do that, someone would call President Trump away. They would get on the phone. He would just be rushed out the back. Absolutely. I talked to one White House intern and, and he said, I'm a, I'm a swamp rat. And I go, what do you mean? He didn't know who I was. And he goes, well, we're here to make sure President Trump doesn't do anything wrong. We were there three weeks and that was happening. And finally, I said, look, we're leaving because we can't, we, we were in the White House and we couldn't even get to him. In 2014, Joe Biden went to Central America and said, bring me your children. And they did. We now have over a quarter million unaccompanied minors in the United States. That makes Joe Biden the largest trafficker of children in American history. Operational control over the southern border is under the control of the criminal cartels of Mexico. Under the Trump administration, we had operational control on the border. That's how we successfully got to a 40-year low in illegal immigration, 83 to 90% reduction in illegal immigration. We control the border. President Biden handed Operation Control of our borders to the criminal cartels by opening the border. No one celebrated this election more than criminal cartels. The criminal cartels right now are making more money than they ever have. Why? Because they're moving record amount of drugs. They're moving record amount of trafficking victims. They're making more money right now than they ever did. That's why you see the violence that's great in Mexico. Now the cartels are fighting each other to control plazas. I started my career as a board physician. I wore that uniform for all years of my life. I was honored to put that badge on my chest. Right now, the Border Patrol morale is not existent. They've been abandoned by the President. They've been abandoned by the Secretary of Homeland Security. These are American heroes. They put that badge on their chest. They put a Kevlar vest on. They put a gun on their hip and go to work. At 2 o'clock in the morning, there's some board lady standing on a dirt trail someplace responding to sensor traffic. He doesn't know what's coming at him, him or her. Is it just someone looking for a better life? Or is it a heavily armed drug smuggler? They don't know, but they're gonna stand there all by themselves and back up 30 miles away to take it on while you and I sleep. These are American heroes. The President Biden likes to say that his policies are more humane than Trump's policies. That's a stone cold lie. More migrants have died on US soil than Joe Biden. Any year I can remember, there's like 700 migrant deaths already. We never seen that during Trump administration. And over 100,000 Americans have died from drug overdoses. The DEA says, not Tom Oman, the DEA says 95% fentanyl comes across the southwest border. His policies aren't humane, they're killing people. In Brooks County, chasing human traffickers is a daily occurrence. He's a freaking pro. He was hunkered down good all that time, wasn't he? Brooks County, Texas is 70 miles north of the border. It only has four deputies. They can do anything they want, kill you, whatever, steal your car, and nobody will know who they are. But they patrol 944 square miles. The largest employer in Brooks County is the Border Patrol Checkpoint on US-281. Cartel traffickers drop off their human cargo, and the illegal aliens attempt to hike 35 miles from the checkpoint through open, dry terrain to the next pickup. The local ranchers call this the killing fields. What difference have you seen between 
2014 to now? Uh, there's been an increase in uh, smuggling. The tactics have gone worse. How many dead bodies have, have, have you been involved in the last 60 days? Six days, I picked up two bodies. And right now we're gonna go pick up uh, skeletal remains from uh, a ranch in the southern part of Perks County. A 60,000 acre ranch. Here we are in South Texas, out here uh, with the uh, Border Patrol, was tracking a group of aliens this morning and came across some skeletal remains. Majority of the skeletons no longer found because taken away by animals. You always say a prayer, sir, when you find these bodies? Yes. It's a miserable death. From here, they go in the truck, JP, morgue, and the medical examiners. Just a routine for Brooks. So. Hmm. Sheriff Martinez, I've been out riding with one of your deputies today, and we just recovered the remains of a person and we we're 10 miles off the road. And it took us a while to get there. How big is your town? Well, we sit at 944 square miles. And the location you went to is on our far southwest corner of the county. On the way out to retrieve the remains, the deputy says that he's been back to duty for six days and has already had three recoveries, you know, dead remains. Three bodies in six days. Is that unusual in this county? I, I'm going to say no, because there's times when we can pick up three to four bodies in one day. In June, we had 23 just last month. And we just, we just left your, your front office there with your staff. They just looked up that since Joe Biden became president in, in January, when this crisis really started, right? Mm -hmm. You had 187 bodies. Correct. You have a staff of yourself and four deputies? Five. I think there is an opening, probably four, yes. So how's a county the size of yours handle almost 200 bodies in a year and a half? I know that when, if you turn over an illegal alien to the Border Patrol that you find living, the government covers everything. What your deputy explained to me that when you turn, when you find a dead body, the federal government gives you no funding. Is that true? Correct. It belongs to the county. So I'm guessing that's a, a policy that needs to be looked at and addressed. As I continue to speak with Sheriff Martinez, we got yet another call. There has to be one male, no ID. Hey, might be uh, somebody, uh, the family's looking for him, so they're going to see if they can ID him. These remains were a little fresher. He's been dead maybe a week to 10 days. It was tough to tell how old he was, but it was obvious he didn't die an easy death. If these deputies can pull prints off his corpse, perhaps they can bring closure to his family. It's just one small victory, but it matters. 
for these deputies, it's just another day in Death County. It's a result of both courts. More deaths. People know people. More deaths since this surge just started than I've ever seen in my career. This is not the man. Migrants are dying every day. This year alone, 187 in a year and a half. Every year, there's a significant number dying on this track of land right here. Have you found any dead bodies on this track of land here? A lot of dead bodies. Over the past 20 years, yes. How many people have you saved since you owned this land? Just myself, a lot. Too many to count, but our border volunteers have saved a lot also. During each operation and every operation that we've had almost 16 years back, all these years we've, we've rescued hundreds of people that have been left behind. You guys sound like the border patrol. You guys are out there saving lives. That's right. That's right. We're out here saving lives and helping people that are left behind and helping women that have uh, fled the group to keep from being sexually assaulted. Have you ever heard of the term rape trees? Yeah, we see rape trees all the time. I've got some pictures of some rape trees. One of them is within 300 yards of my front door at my house. Dr. Dahl Borders did a study. They say that 31% of women that make this journey get sexually assaulted. We get a lot of women in groups that are dressed like men for that reason. They know if they present themselves as a woman, there's a good chance they're going to be sexually assaulted and raped. And I'm not playing politics, the data's clear. I mean, the numbers are, like you said, like you said, during the last four years, last administration, it was pretty quiet around here, but within a month of the new administration, so the numbers skyrocketed. It's just not a matter of politics and this administration versus that administration. The data's clear, the numbers are clear. There's no question, I think, we see the depravity of man out here. We see the suffering of humanity. We see children out here. We've rescued children that have been left behind, that are scared out of their mind. Uh, the same thing with women and even males left behind. They know they're going to die. They're already in the early stages of dying. We rescue them. We get them water, water poured down them. We get the Boar Star units out here to run IVs on them. Painful way to die. This uh, is a rescue station. It's a beacon. There's a blue light on there that turns on uh, before dark and pulsates and beats all night long. So somebody coming through here that can't keep up or is sick, they can go to this rescue beacon, push that button, and it activates in the uh, Border Patrol checkpoint that's probably about 12 miles from where we are. Border Patrol agent uh, will come and respond and try to help. I know it's a DHS license plate, so it's got to be funded and put out here by the Border Patrol. Yes. Six on this ranch alone. I think there's six on this ranch alone. So I noticed on the uh, the sign there's in English and Spanish. That's right. I'm sure most of the people come here speak Spanish, but I've been told by numerous people since I've been here that we had people from Mideast, from Asia. Yeah. How are they going to read this sign? Well... I can show you the, an Urdu dictionary that we found uh, 
coyote had dropped a group of uh, Middle Easterners in mm-hmm. here. Have you ever seen one of these signs in a different language? Yeah, well, the, the, up until the Biden administration, this sign also had a, a message in Mandarin Chinese telling them to push the button if they're uh, injured or, or weak or sick or can't keep up. So why would they take that sign down? I've been told there's still Chinese coming through here. Oh, yeah, there's still Chinese coming through. Why would they we, take the down then? I don't know. I have no idea why they changed it. Uh, we still have Chinese coming through. And in fact, back before this administration uh, took office, we had Chinese actually push that button. They were left behind, and they were saved. So uh, don't know why they changed it, but they did. Particular individual had his eyes cut out. People wanted to know what happened, what cut the eyes out. His eyes were cut out by a caracara, a Mexican eagle. That's the first thing that they go for. It's something that we see, and we see frequently, the eyeballs are the first things to go. After we got through with him, we walk another 100 yards and we find this guy. He wasn't so lucky. We were a little late. We were a little late in finding him. Still some flash to I mean, he's decomposing, but not totally. I see he's missing limbs. You messaged to me earlier today that the animals will tear these people apart and take limbs away. Yeah. We find a lot of them deceased that they're usually staring at the stars or staring at the pearly gates. They're looking straight up. It's unfortunate, but that's kind of the way we find a lot of them. This is a young person. He was trying to keep up with a group that was on a, a high line trail. And he was down on the north end of it, and there's a gate there, and he tried to climb over the gate, and everybody climbed over, but he wasn't able to make it. Uh, he collapsed and died, and that's where we found him right there, 12 years old. A 12-year-old who would never have a chance to live his life. That's right. It's really depressing that they walked off and left him. Somebody's son. Two days after we left the Vickers Ranch, this woman died 50 yards from Mike's front door. Did she leave behind a husband who loved her? Did she have kids? Either way, she'll never see her family again. And I can't stop thinking of that 12-year-old child. I've seen too many dead children in my career. If the border were secure, this young man would be alive today. This has to stop. I'm not done serving my country. I'll rest when I'm dead. These bastards will not stop me. My mission is to see that we secure this border once again, because when we defend the border, we save lives.